Hey, this is Jody here from WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. Thanks for watching another video. Today we're going to be putting a few TIG passes in a 6G open butt uh, pipe joint. And normally this would be a great joint to walk the cup on, but today we're going to be uh, doing a little freehanding using a TIG finger heat shield. And I'm going to show you a little technique on the root pass that, you, that you, uh, this really works well on. The TIG finger works good on all kinds of uh, odd shaped areas, and it works good anywhere where your fingers get hot, basically. So. Um, I get emails all the time talking about how people love these, and uh, I want to show you today a little uh, some some TIG root pass and two or three more passes, and I hope you get something out of it. And I'll show you how this thing works. Now, walking the cup, you you normally have to wiggle that electrode a little side to side, and that's really the the drawback. And plus, sometimes walking the cup's just not possible. There's other pipes in the way, or maybe you're welding a half inch pipe. You know, you can't walk the cup. It's very hard anyway to walk a cup on a half inch tubing or whatever so uh, being able to do it both ways is a big benefit so propping on that thing doubling doubling the thicknesses up like that on the bottom your fingers just won't get hot all right let's light up on this thing I know I should have a glove on I forgot sorry about that all right, forward and back is the is the technique I like to use on a root pass, open butt root pass like this. I like to have the gap just big enough that that wire lays in there uh, without falling, flopping through. And then I put it right in there and bear down on the tip of it with the tip of that electrode and do forward and back motion, not side to side, forward and back. Go forward, the arc force pushes a little metal up in there and then backwards lets it kind of fuse in a little bit better so you don't have any cold lap. Now, if it, cold, if it keyholes like that a little bit with you, and it will occasionally, just keep a little downward pressure on that uh, rod, and uh, don't panic. It'll, it'll fill in, push it in there, and just, uh, just keep going forward and back. What, does, what this does is it helps the bottom look like the top. You know, the bottom usually looks really flat, and the top is poked in there really good. And sometimes the bottom's even sucked back, and some inspectors don't like that suck back uh, root pass on the bottom. Nobody likes it really. Going side to side, it kind of uh, seems unavoidable sometimes. So this it just helps uh, make sure to break those walls down. And uh, especially if you're, if you're seeing that keyhole every now and then, you know you're right on the ragged edge, being plenty hot to break the walls down. So that's the root pass, forward and back. You don't want to use quite as much angle as I have here, but if I, if I did use the right angle, you wouldn't be able to see anything. The camera would be blocked. All right, for the hot pass, and uh, we really shouldn't call it the hot pass. It's kind of confusing because it's, we're really not welding any hotter than we were on the root pass. Generally speaking, whatever works on the root pass works good for the second pass also. But people call it a hot pass, and, and that you know they know what you're talking about. So I guess we could we could still call it a hot pass. If you use the same heat, it keeps you out of trouble. You don't don't want to get carried away. Now after that, after the hot pass is in there, now we cranked it up about 25 amps. I think we ran the root pass at about 100 even, and uh, and the second pass or the hot pass at 100, and we crank it up to 125 for these passes. Just stacking them in there, just like you would any bead in a in a groove weld. Stacking, starting at the bottom, working up to the top. And then after we get these uh, passes in there, and we have some meat in there. There's no risk of any suck back or anything like that. We we can we can turn the heat up another 25 amps or so. And because I was a little uneven here, stacked toward the bottom, I just went ahead and ran a third pass hotter up top to even to even things up. And now you can also dip. You don't have to use the lay wire technique. You can you can dip it in and out if you want to really make sure that you're not rolling any uh, silicon under or anything like that or cold lapping. And you want you know if you do it right, it looks almost as good as if you walk the cup. Maybe not quite, but but um, pretty decent anyway. Walking the cup makes makes a really nice lace, but uh, you can do a good job freehand, especially if you've got something like this that's nice and smooth that slides on. So for odd-shaped objects, you know, for for uh, cast iron manifolds, preheated aluminum, all that kind of stuff, it, it's it's going to come in really handy for for being able to prop right next to the weld instead of a foot away from it to keep your hand cool. So that's the TIG finger heat shield. I hope you got something out of watching this TIG welding video today. Visit weldingtipsandtricks.com.